in this session we will look at uh, the derivatives of arithmetical functions so we'll try to define what we mean by a derivative of an arithmetical function and we will show that given this definition it satisfies the properties of the derivative which you are familiar with okay so uh, this is the way we define the derivative of an arithmetical function. So if f is a arithmetical function, we define the derivative of f to be f times log, that is f prime of n is f of n times log of n. So to see a few examples, we know that i n is defined to be 1 if n is 1 and 0 otherwise. Therefore, i n prime of n would be log of 1 if n is equal to 1, this here is 1, and uh, 0 if n is greater than 1. But we know that log of 1 is 0, so this will come out to be. 0 okay now we have proved that uh, log of n is summation d divides n uh, lambda d okay where lambda is the mangold function we have proved this result now u prime would be u n times log n which will be 1 times log n and hence that is log n and you can see this portion over here this is exactly lambda convolution with u at 1 okay so uh, we can see that this relation is true so keep this relation in mind we will use it for an important result at the end that is lambda convolution with u is u prime now as i said we are defining the derivative and we will see that the derivative satisfies the properties of the derivative that you are familiar with for example we will show that the derivative of f plus g is the derivative of f plus the derivative of g here we are using the convolution not the regular multiplication so the derivative of f convolution g is what you would expect in when the convolution is replaced by multiplication that is uh, f prime convolution g plus f convolution with g prime and we know that when f of 1 is non-zero we can talk about the inverse of f so we would like to know what is the derivative of the inverse and this here works out to be exactly what you would expect that is minus f prime convolution with f prime convolution with f inverse now here this might look a little odd but we know that the derivative of 1 by f where f is a differentiable function is minus f prime upon f square so now you can see the resemblance what is in the denominator is f convolution f inverse. So let's prove all these results one at a time. So this result is very easy to prove. So what happens to f plus g prime at n? So this by definition is f plus g at n times log of n. Now we can split the log n for f and g to give us f of n times log of n plus g of n times log of n. And this is f prime of n and this is g prime of n. Okay, so this result follows very easily. Let us now prove the second result. So what is f convolution g prime at n by definition 
this will be f convolution with g at n into log of n now what is f convolution g at n it is summation d divides n f of t times g of n by d and this we multiply to log of n now we want to somehow get uh, f prime and g prime so the natural way of thinking of this is splitting the log so first let's multiply the log into the sum that will give us summation d divides n f of d g of n by d times log of n now this log n we can split as log of d plus log of n by d because log of d plus log of n by d is the same as log of d times n by d and d times n by d is n so we can split the sum to give us summation d divides n f of d log of d g of n by d plus summation d divides n f of d g of n by d times log of n by d this here will give us here you can see you have f times uh, f of d times log of d which is f prime at d plus summation d divides n this here will be g prime at d and therefore we get f prime convolution with g at n plus f convolution with g prime at n okay and this proves our result to prove this result we will use the previous result we know that f convolution with f inverse is the identity function this means that using the previous result we have f prime convolution with f inverse plus f convolution with f inverse prime is zero because the derivative of the identity function is zero now we are looking for f inverse prime so we will take this term to that side we will get f convolution with f inverse prime is equal to minus f prime convolution with f inverse and since we are looking for this term we will multiply by the inverse of f on both sides to give us and we are uh, we know that the convolution is a commutative operator so we get f inverse prime is equal to minus f prime convolution with f inverse convolution with f inverse okay but f inverse convolution with f inverse is the same as f convolution with f the whole inverse okay so this proves our three results okay so finally we will prove uh, the selberg's identity so let us see what the selberg's identity says uh, let us write this down in the notations which we have just arrived at so lambda times log is lambda prime plus here the second term is lambda convolution with lambda and the term to the right okay we know that log of n 
is u prime which means that u double prime of n will be log of n times log of n and that will be log square of n so therefore this part here will be u double prime of n by d so this on the right gives us mu convolution with u double prime so this is essentially what we have got to prove now we know that since uh, log of n is equal to summation d divides n lambda d we know that this log n is u prime of n and this here is lambda convolution with u at n so therefore we know that u prime is equal to lambda convolution with u so this will mean that u double prime is equal to lambda prime convolution with u plus lambda convolution with u prime okay now you can see there's a mu multiplied here so let us do the same thing here we will get mu convolution with u double prime is equal to mu convolution with lambda prime convolution with u plus mu convolution with lambda convolution with u prime now here this is using the commutativity of the convolution operation we have lambda prime convolution with mu convolution with u plus mu convolution with lambda convolution with now here you can see this part we will replace with this identity which will be lambda convolution with u okay so now we know that mu convolution with u is i so this will give us i okay and we can take this to that side using the commutativity and again we will get u convolution with mu which will again give us i so we will have lambda convolution with lambda convolution with i and this gives us lambda prime plus lambda convolution with lambda and this proves the Selberg's identity okay so with this we will end today's session and i will see you in the next session.